Welcome to Real Chemistry. Today we're going to be talking about electron configurations. What we're thinking about here is if we add an electron around a nucleus, what orbital does it go into? And the orbitals are just the different shapes that electrons can be smeared out in around atoms. So we have the s orbital, which is just a sphere, and the p orbital, which is a set of barbells, or looks kind of like a set of barbells, and the d orbital, which looks kind of like a clover. And what we want to ask ourselves is if I add an electron around an atom, what orbital does it go into? Additionally, there's different sizes for all these orbitals. So you can have a small s orbital or a big s orbital. We call a small s orbital like 1s, or a big s orbital 4s. So those numbers in front of s, p, and d tell you something about the size and energy of that orbital. And so in this episode, we're going to want to talk about where those electrons go first. And here in this graph, you see a range of different orbitals, and they're located and sorted by their energies. And the basic idea here is if I add an electron, it goes to the lowest energy orbital. So it's kind of like rolling a ball downhill. It's going to go all the way down until it stops. And in the same way, when I add an electron around a nucleus, it's going to go to the lowest energy orbital. And so in this case, you can see that the lowest energy orbital is a 1s orbital right here. And so that means any electrons you add initially around a nucleus would go into the 1s orbital. Then they'd fill the 2s, and then they'd fill the 2p, then the 3s, then the 3p, and so on and so forth. So the higher the line is on this chart, the higher the energy of that orbital. And so what we can think about is we can take a given atom that has a given number of electrons, and we can ask ourselves, what orbitals would those electrons go into when we just fill from the bottom up? So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. So let's say we want to have nitrogen, and we want to know where do the electrons go for nitrogen? What orbitals do they sit in? Well, the first thing you're going to want to ask yourself is how many electrons does nitrogen have? And you can see when you look at nitrogen on the periodic table that it has seven electrons. So that means that we need to put in a total of seven electrons into these orbitals. And we're going to represent electrons with arrows. So when I draw an up arrow, that represents an electron. When I draw a down arrow, that represents an electron. And what you should know about each one of these lines on this chart is that they each hold two electrons, one spin up and one spin down. So we're going to start at the lowest energy, and we're going to fill those lines with two electrons each. And we're just going to keep filling until we've filled seven electrons into our orbitals. And so the very first place we fill is this 1s, because it's the lowest energy. And we always fill with up electrons before down electrons. So now that's full. That's two electrons. And then now we have three electrons we put into orbitals, four electrons. And now that we've filled the 2s, the next lowest energy is the 2p. We've already taken care of four of the seven electrons, so we have three more electrons to put in. So we have one more, two more, three more. That gives us a total of seven electrons. And we know where they are now. Two electrons are in the 1s orbital, two electrons are in the 2s orbital, and three electrons are in the 2p orbital. Now every single time you want to tell somebody where your electrons are, you don't want to have to dry, draw this giant graph. So instead what you do is you write out an electron configuration. And the way you do that is first you write the orbital. So the very first electrons are in the 1s orbital. And then above the s, you tell me how many electrons are there. Well, there's two electrons in the 1s orbital. Remember that we put two electrons down here, one, two. And so that means we put this two up there. The next orbital we see as we continue up in energy is the 2s orbital. So we put 2s. And that fills with two electrons. The next orbital we filled was the 2p. So then we go ahead and we write 2p. And how many electrons were there? One, two, three. So we put a three there. That's an electron configuration. So this is the electron configuration for nitrogen. So if somebody asks you, what's the electron configuration for nitrogen? That's your answer. So really, we just use the graph below as sort of a tool to figure out what the electron configuration is. Turns out there's a really easy, fast way to do this using the periodic table, and we'll talk about that in my next video, which is called the periodic table trick for electron configuration. So check that video out after this one to see a much faster way to do this, because we don't want to have to draw this chart every time. So that's nitrogen. Let's do a few more examples so you can get a handle for how these electron configurations are written. And let's also take a closer look at what we mean when we write 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. So, I already said this on the previous slide, but remember that those top numbers, those things that are superscripted after the 1s, 2s, and 2p, tell me the number of electrons in each orbital. Whereas the 1s tells me the name of the orbital. 1s just means the lowest energy, the smallest 1s orbital. 2s means the second lowest energy s orbital, the second biggest s orbital. And we see over on the right here 
that we have two electrons in our 1s, two electrons in our 2p, and three electrons in our 2p. And that's why we say 1s2, 2s2, 3p3 is our electron configuration. Let's do a few more elements. All right, here we have magnesium. And again, all we're going to do is we're going to think about how many electrons does magnesium have? Well, it has 12. So 12 electrons, that's how many we need to put in. And we already know that we're going to put in 2 in our 1s, 2 in our 2s, a total of 6 in our 2p. That gives us a total of 10 electrons so far. So we have 2 in the 1s, 2 in the 2s, and 6 in the 2p for a total of 10 electrons we put in. That means we need two more electrons, and they're going to go into the 3s. That's the next lowest energy. So we just fill from the bottom up. And now if I want to write that electron configuration for magnesium, I do it in the exact same way. My first orbital I put electrons in is my 1s orbital, and there's two electrons in it. Then I put electrons in the 2s orbital, and there's two electrons in it. Then I put them in the 2p orbital, and there's six electrons there. And finally, I put electrons in the 3s orbital, and there's two electrons there. So that's my answer. That's the electron configuration for magnesium. All I'm doing, you is, t doing is telling you what number of electrons are in each orbital. There's two in the 1s, two in the 2s, six electrons in the 2p orbital, and finally two electrons in the 3s orbital. And these critically affect the properties that elements are going to have, and we'll see that later on. All right, let's do another element. Here we have chromium. So now we have a little bit more of a complicated case. We have 24 electrons, and so that takes a little more time to fill. 24 electrons. And so here the main challenge is just making sure you're counting correctly that you're putting in 24 electrons. And again, we just start from the bottom. We put in the 1s electrons, and then we put in the 2s electrons. That's a total of four. Then we put in the 2p electrons. And once we do that, we have six electrons. It's always six electrons that go into any p orbital if it's full. Two electrons that go into any s orbital if it's full. So now we have a total of 10 electrons. That's our 11th and our 12th. Then we go to the 3p orbital and fill it in with our 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th. So now we have 18 total electrons and we go to the 4s. 1920. And then, notice that we go to the d orbital. The 3d orbital is lower in energy than the 4p orbital. So that throws people for a loop a little while. After 4s, you go to 3d, and that's a little strange. So, right now, we have uh, 8 total electrons in our s orbitals, 12 total electrons in our p orbitals, for a total of 20 electrons. And that means we have 4 more that we need to put in. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that is the filled in... Uh, orbital diagram for chromium, and now we can write our electron configuration. We know that we put two electrons in the 1s for chromium. We put two electrons in the 2s. And in the 2p, we put six electrons. And you can start to kind of see there's a pattern here. In the 3s, we put two electrons. and the 3p, we put six electrons. So now we're through the 3p. And we need to put 4s, and there's two electrons there. And we ran out of space, so we'll just write 3d below it. And in the 3d, there's four electrons. So normally you'd write that on the same line. All right, so that's the electron configuration for chromium. You can see that as the elements get higher in terms of the number of electrons, we don't just want to fill in these sorts of diagrams. We want to use the periodic table, and it's a much quicker way to write these electron configurations. So now that you have a basic idea of what electron configurations are, go ahead and watch my next video, The Periodic Table Trick for Electron Configurations. And there, we'll learn how to write these things much faster. Thanks for watching Real Chemistry. Please subscribe to receive updates about future videos. You can also ask any questions you have below. Thanks for watching.